Hey, Ronnie here. In this video, we're going to do a comparo and help you decide which tire deflator is best for you. We've got the stick, we've got the automatic deflators, which is screw on each wheel, and we've got the rapid tire deflators. So if this video is for you, stay tuned. Subscribers, welcome back, first time viewers. G'day, I'm Ronnie from fourwheelingwesternaustralia.com, the full drive and camping information website. Rightio, let's get into these tire deflators. Now what I'm going to share with you is my opinion on which type of tire deflator will suit you so you don't go out and spend unnecessary cash or waste money. And we're gonna do a speed test as well. So at the end of the video, there'll be a time trial on each individual tire deflator to do a comparo so you can see how long they take and better make a judgment for yourself. And before we get straight into it, some people consider tire deflators recovery gear. It's not recovery gear, people. A tire deflator is something that just comes with full driving. You need to lower your tires. And uh, these tools I'm gonna show you will help you do it. So we'll start with a stick. Now everyone knows what a stick is. Well, I hope you do. And it doesn't matter where you're from or country you're in, these are available everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And if you don't have a stick, there's a rock. Don't have a rock, well, we can use an Allen key even. The pros, you can find them anywhere, cost you nothing. And the cons, well, you've got to do each individual tyre. You should really get a tyre gauge to help you determine what PSI you're down to. Now, the stick is perfect for those who are just starting out full driving and for those who don't go very often. There's no need to spend money on a tyre deflator if you don't go very often. This will do fine and you'll see in the speed test, it actually performs quite well. Automatic tire deflators. So why are these automatic? Well, you set them to your desired PSI, you screw them on, you walk off, and you come back later, and they're done. All done to the same PSI, if you set them correctly. This type of deflator, I would recommend to the person who just goes fishing or on a single terrain who uses the same PSI every time. Because these are quite hard to reset to get to a different PSI. Of course, you can just set it to 18 or something like that, and then you can always adjust later while using an Allen key or a stick. So that is another way you can get the finer adjustments on it. But as a basic use, they are a pain to reset to another PSI. This imitation style, or like the Storm, it's got the two screws which go together, they're finger tightened. These will bang around your car, and these are quite unreliable. So this made me stop using these, because I was getting frustrated with all different PSIs all the time and I tried to upgrade to this one here, and this one just took too long. And you'll see in the speed test how long all these take. First pro is, of course, you get four of them. So they go on each wheel, screw them on, walk off, and it's done. Or you screw them on and start driving. Just remember to take them off because these will be sticking out, increasing the length they're sticking out and increase your chance of hitting a rock or something like that. And um, it could damage your deflator or even worse, your actual valve on your vehicle. The cons. Well, I already mentioned one's not that reliable when it gets banged around. This one you can bang around as much as you want. It is not gonna move because you got an Allen key and you set it with and it's quite tight. So it's not just gonna move on its own. You will need a tire gauge with it to check that the pressure is correct and also to set them with. So that's another con, you need another piece of equipment. You can't just take these and off you go. You need to check it with this. Rapid tire deflator. These are my absolute favorite. I started with this one, which is the ARB Ease Deflator, and then I went to this one, which is just a, a cheap imitation, and um, I found they both work pretty, pretty well. Although this one here, I had to use a bit of WD-40 on it, but this one here, I haven't had to do anything to. They're probably made in the same bloody factory, who knows? So, these, are what you should have if you frequently go off-road. If you go all different kinds of terrain, you want different PSIs all the time, you know, this is what you should be doing. These are bloody awesome. How they work, you screw them on, bang, 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 uh, with the plunger out, screw them on, plunger goes in, that plunger unscrews your valve core, 
and once it's unscrewed your valve core, pull the plunger up, you push this back here, so it's on the valve, the air pressure will let the valve core out and the air just comes out really super fast, like really fast. You've seen a speed test, how bloody fast it is. You've got a gauge on it, so you don't need that other gauge to check it with, unless of course you break this one. These gauges, they're on there, you can get the exact PSI you want, you can adjust different PSI from the front to the back, in my case I do that because my vehicle is so heavy in the back. Here's one con, that slight problem is you will need to keep some spare valve cores in your vehicle. You should have them anyway in your tyre repair kit and if you don't have one I do suggest go out and get one. They usually come with the tyre valve spare ones in there, tyre valve cores. Reason why I say you should get that is because once you've used this over time, uh, it doesn't matter where you go off-roading, if you've got low PSI or whatever, there will be muck getting into your tyres and if you lose that little cap that you have on your valve, which most of us do, then you get crap in there as well, which you can flush out but you never get it all. Those small fine particles, every time you pull the valve out and put it back in, you are you know, screwing it back onto some crap and you take it off, you put it back in. Uh, over time, you will have to change your valve core. It's no biggie, it's pretty easy. Previous vehicle, I had to change all four of my valve cores. This vehicle now, the Land Cruiser, I've only had to do it on one tire so far. So now to the speed test. All right, stick. Start. Three minutes, 21. Just gone below 14 PSI with the trusty stick in three minutes and 21 seconds. And start. Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes, let's check out where we're at. Twenty PSI. And we are at fifteen PSI. Not bad. Forty. So here we go again. Forty PSI right on the dots. And uh, to beat four minutes, here we go. Please be there, I'm a bit tired of all this now. 16 PSI, close enough. Nine minutes, five seconds. And I think I remember why. Again, we have 40 PSI. Here we go. I'll start the timer from when I start screwing this on just to simulate real time. One minute and 12 seconds to get the 15 PSI. We'll just double check with this one to make sure. Fifteen ish. It says 16 on the gauge. So pretty close. Okay, that one was just faster. Let's 
16 PSI as well. Rightio, so after you've seen the speed test and um, got the information, tell me which one do you prefer? The stick? The automatic deflators? Or the rapid tire deflators? Hit us up at fourwheelingwestonaustralia.com and you can subscribe right here if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, catch you in another video, might see you out there. See ya!